What's up, guys? Welcome to episode three, season two of the Monday Night Wars. I am Chad Talk, and joining me, as always, is J Mac Gaming. Chad, I don't like how you uh, went episode three, season two. No, it's season two, episode three. You do it the reverse way, well, you Chad. Know you know what? You know what? No, you can do it from now on. No. Yes. Okay, then you can record and edit out of the videos then. Oh, fine, I will. They'll come out in potato quality and 144p with your. <laughs> Trying to record TW videos on one monitor. Ugh. Ugh. I remember those days. Now I have two monitors like a big boy. <laughs> I grew up. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. Oh, well, that wasn't a knock on you. That was a knock on 2016 us. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Let's get on to Monday Night Raw, Chad. And Chad, I, uh, this is a big Raw, Chad. This might steal the show. Well, mm. I guess we'll see. Mm. Let's see. Let's start the show off, though, in our pre-show. Uh, we have a pre, uh, you know, the pre-show about Steve Carino defeating Lenny Lane in 9.05. With that old school expulsion, Chad. 63 for Steve Carino. Good for Steve Carino. And our other pre-show main event. Our pre-show main event. Epico defeating a bold Buchanan in 911. Never forget with a primetime slam. <laughs> oh no. Oh, what? No. What? What? Oh no. <laughs> Start... Also, Epico and Bull Buchanan should never be in the same sentence that has the word main event in it. Ah. Um, will we start the, this Raw off? I shouldn't have moved on because uh, that would spoil us who's in it. But it doesn't matter. The Rock, uh, you know, he comes out of the ring. You know, the intro pyro goes up. And uh, Rock makes his way to the line of the ring. And he's not happy, Chad. He's not happy. Last week, uh, the main event, he defeated Ken Shamrock. And he was, you know, was really just shitting on being on Raw. And uh, he says, uh, I wa look, The Rock watched Raw last week. And <laughs> by God, was The Rock disappointed. Are you... What was that? My what? What was that? Like, What'd you open? What? I don't know what you're talking about. Chad, stop eating in my promos. <laughs> Unprofessional. <laughs> Go on, do your show. Uh, fuck off. Uh, you know, by God, The Rock and Justin were disappointed that Chad was eating during Raw. <laughs> He's, I see. He says, "I see people cheering for guys like Scott Stud and Taka for winning against guys like Mosh Number Two. Ugh. Oh, is this what is this what The Rock Show has come to? Is this what Monday Night Raw has come to? The Rock and his millions and millions and millions of fans might even just might take his talents." To smack that, and then Taka mentioned Noku comes out, Chad. Ooh. He comes out, and he gets right in Rock's face. He's like, "I'm Rock, do, do Rock. I'm so sick and tired of being treated like a nobody here. You know, just because I don't have the accolades and the title history and the title lineage, I, I, I don't have that to back it up. That doesn't mean I can't kick your ass." Ooh. And, uh, you know, Vince, Vince immediately comes on. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Cool it down over there. I get it. You want to beat the, Taka, I, I get it. You want to beat the shit out of the rock and rock. I get it. You, you don't think Taka's even, you can't even lace up your boots. But I got two guys in the back who also want to beat each other up. So how about tonight on our main event? Rock, you'll, you'll team up with Mr. Ass Billy Gunn. And you'll take on Taka Michinoku in our Intercontinental Champion, Mark Henry, in our main event. And Taka and Rock are both excited. They're both happy. So, hey, Taka coming out. He's tired of being disrespected. Chad! <laughs> Mute the Taka's mic. Mute the mic if you're going to open anything. Taka's tired of being disrespected. I'm so am I. <laughs> oh, fuck you, Chad. Off to a great start here in Season 2. Chad has lost all manners. It doesn't matter. Everything's out the book. He's got... Now I don't feel bad about stealing his guys in this episode. 
Match number one of the night, we got Scott Norton taking on the world's sexiest man, Jason Knight. Uh, and, it, you know, decent reaction from the crowd, but some part wrestling. 7.53, Scott Norton gets the win with a big power bomb. This was supposed to be JBL, but he got hurt on a house show. So, um, and it was also was not supposed to be Jason Knight. I just remembered, but uh, whatever. We move on. A Steel has arrived to the arena. He's in a match tonight, but he's also, Chad, he doesn't, you know, he gets out of his car and he's wearing the mask of Jushin Thunder Liger that he took back in, uh, back of last year. He's wearing a the bastard. mask. A bastard. You know, they, I mean, ever since that incident, you know, they've been on different paths, but now they're both on Raw again. I mean, they were already on Raw, but like, who knows? Maybe A Steel's here to make a statement of Juice and like, this is my show now, you know? We move on. Match number two of the night Tommy Rich and Major Stash. And uh, Major Stash defeats Tommy Rich in 9 10 with a flashback, but after the match, you know, these Firehouse get their uh, they get their heat back. You know, they last week they got beat down by Stash and Stud, and this week Matthews and Sultan beat down Major Stash after the match, Jen. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. They, we have a uh, we have another vignette right here, Chad. And last week it said you're coming. And this time it just says future shock is on its way. Ooh, future shock. Future shock. Z, 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 Z. Who could it be, Chad? What group could it be? Chad has his predictions. Leave them in the comments below who your predictions are. I think it's a shock master. That, I don't... Yeah, you're right. Uh, match number three. Shock we, and future shock. Ace Steel comes out, and he's where he gets he makes his entrance, still wearing that Liger mask, and uh, he beats Mark Merrill. 74, good for Ace Steel, 79. And, oh, oh, oh. Hey, Steel pulling out 80s. Um, the big game hunter, you know, gets a big win oh, yeah. against Mark Mara wearing the mask. And then after the match, Liger comes out, Chad. He's not happy that his mask is being disrespected still. And he comes out and he lays down the challenge he, he, he uh, uh, for Ace Steel at Backlash. But it's not for Ace Steel's WWF European Champion, Chad. He, he's taken on Ace Steel and he wants his mask back. The mask on the line match. Ooh. A steel a liger. What does what does Jushin give up? His mask that he's wearing now, the black one. Ooh, a mask versus mask. Well, it's a mask on a you'll you find out, Chad. You will find out. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. Uh we got some breaking news. Uh finally, uh, a couple weeks after Right at Mania, we finally get some medical news regarding Kane and his uh, third degree burns. Uh and unfortunately he will be out roughly two to three months. Uh, recovering with those uh, severe burns. So Kane, an unfortunate draft pick right there because he will be out for a little bit. But uh, yeah, recovering from his, you know, deadly burns that he that he suffered at the hands of Undertaker at WrestleMania. After that, Jeff Jarrett hits the ring, Chad. Ooh, Jeff Jarrett. He was not drafted. If you do, if you remember in the draft special, he was not drafted, Chad. Yeah. He was one of the big what? names not drafted. And he didn't have the mic. And, uh, you know, he tells the crowd that, you know, after he heals up from his injury, even now, he's the hottest wrestling free agent. You know, he's not, he doesn't, he's not held down or, you know, contracted to any, you know, brand here. And, you know, he says, where am I going to take my talents? You know, I could take my talents here on Raw. Everyone's cheering. SmackDown, uh, a couple boos, but a couple cheers. TNA, everyone's, you know, like, what the fuck? No. WCW major boost. Everyone's throwing trash in the ring. They're like, <laughs> they're like, no, I don't want to see that shit. Hell no. But yeah, Jeff Jordan, you know, holding out his options right here. Uh, after that, we got Christian and Shane McMahon. We saw Christian get beaten down backstage by Kurt Angle, and he's still nursing an injury. Uh, he's still, you know, he's got he's limping a little bit. His ankle's still a little fucked up, but he defeats Shane McMahon and. Uh, 1419 with a pinfall with a DDT, Chad. Ooh. Got an 82. Christian Cage gets a big win. Um, uh, we The camera goes straight to Kurt Angle backstage, and I forgot to book this angle last week, so I guess, um, you know. Well, this Kurt, is the only angle you have on your show, so. <laughs> last week, Angle, you know, was also, you know, he's. 
the whole the whole reasoning behind him attacking Christian was that he's he's, he's upset that DX is at least Sean and Road Dog are on SmackDown and he is on Raw by himself. And uh, what did I write down? Let me go. Let me just. Uh, it said I wrote down Kurt Angle's sad now that Shawn Michaels and Road Dog have been drafted to SmackDown, and he took out his his anger on Christian Cage. And then this week, the angle is written. I wrote down uh, you, the camera cuts to him back there. Watching that match, shaking his head, and he's still sad about the X being split up and everyone going to SmackDown. And he calls Triple he got, not calls Triple H, he calls Vince himself. He says, "Hey Vince, have, is any word on Triple H? Any word on Triple H?" And Vince, you know, sends him straight to voicemail. Ooh. And then our fifth, our main, a co-main event of the night: Sean Stasiak taking on. Steve Blackman, only a 76, because Blackman really fucked us there, but it doesn't matter. Sean Stasek pins, uh, beats him in 12.05 with a Fisherman Suplex, our world champion, gets a nice win, stands on the turnbuckle uh, to celebrate Chad. Um, and then a masked man, he's wearing a motorcycle helmet, all black, gets to the ring, Stasek drops down, he doesn't know he's in there in the ring, drops down off the top rope, he t and he spins around, and he gets a missile drop kick to the chest. It's Edge. Oh. A la ECW One Night Stand 2006 when he comes out and he spears Cena to help RVD win. That's what Edge does here. Missile drop kick Sean Stasiak. And, you know, and then he, I wrote down, he snakes through the crowd before security gets to the ring. And we move on to our main event. It's Rock and Billy Gunn taking on Tonka and Mark Henry. You know, they have a, it's a, a banger match right here, Chad. A banger tag team match. You know, Rock hits a, the, the, Rock hits a sick rock bottom on Taka and Shinoku. But Taka kicks out at 2.9. False finish right there. Uh, the finish to this match was, uh, you know, Rock, uh, Mark Henry gets the, uh, the hot tag. Takes out close, uh, takes out Rock on his final move. Taka tags in, and it's the Mo Michinoku driver on Billy Gunn and Taka and Mark Henry get the win over Billy Gunn and the Rock. Ooh, and that is our show. Big, sh big win for Taka getting a win, technically against the Rock and Billy Gunn. And that's so our show. The Rock and Billy Gunn in one night. That's true. Uh, Eighty-seven. You know, this is a this is a good this was a good story building. Raw. We got backlash in a couple weeks, and uh, you know what? And when we get a blue number with Billy Gunn and Taka in the main event, I can't I can't be mad. I can't be mad. You can't be. You can't be. How could you? How could you? All right, that was Raw. We'll see you guys for Nitro. Chat. Any wise words for the fans before we jump right into Nitro? Uh, no. All right, everyone, we are here. Listen, I am I know what you're all thinking. Oh, finally, the better Monday night show. Are you kidding has me? Arrived. Oh. <laughs> so, just, so, oh, so grab a snack, eat it during the show. Uh, I don't care. There's no rules here. We're ready to roll. Well, Justin, I, ready for I know there's no rules. You don't have any care in the world about it. I know. You're a lawless man. Don't make me bring the law, the, the, the court case into this. <laughs> <laughs> court case you know what bring bring the court case no uh, well, my, law my lawyers will talk to your lawyers look Justin. look if we bring in your honor um look i mean he ruled in, in favor of wwf no, no one gets what's going in no one gets what's going on here but us yeah well maybe we should fill in everyone listen I, well let's do that on one of your shows i would like to spend my shows not doing that well you did cheat the system and you did get penalized i for did it. not cheat the system mm. it was something that we agreed to do it's not mm. cheating if both parties agree who's, anyway who's and gotta pay free money show match. yeah and it's bullshit oh it's somebody's show to you it, it is and you can get that on audio you can get that on audio of me saying it's bullshit all right i'll send it to your honor good i hope so i hope you do that's bullshit and in a pretty decent pre-show match. You would be Charles poor if I didn't give you money earlier. <laughs> defeated two cold Scorpio with a power bomb. This was supposed to be for the 24-7 title, but we never said, forgot to set it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She Probably. wasn't losing it. And now here's Justin's pre-show. Yeah, Chad That's decided it. to just to bring in these guys uh, just for shits and gigs. They're global champions, so yeah. I saw what he did. So I said, all right. 
Taz got to win. And we open the show off with a 96 match. Fashion Hero Chono versus Chris Jericho. And about that had superb wrestling and great heat. Jericho defeated Chono with a lion tamer. What if this got 100? Wouldn't that be wild? I would have... <laughs> Jericho... I would have been phone. so mad because this storyline shouldn't be happening right now. <laughs> Because, because, but it was the game doing it. Yeah, I would be so pissed off. I'd have been like, oh, wow, well, the universe really wanted me to have a 100 match, too. <laughs> uh, Jericho grabs a microphone and he says, you know, he basically says, at Spring Stampede, we're going, me and Ahmed, my best friend Ahmed, the best of the best, we're going against Masahiro Chono and Tenzan. And listen, those two, they are hell of athletes. They beat us. They beat us. We beat them last week. Wait, no, they didn't beat us last week. Sorry, I, I was kicked in the head, and, it, and I don't remember. Anyway, I beat them this week, so I'm excited for our match. It's going to be a good one. But listen, at the end of the day, the best of the best are going to walk away with the titles because we are the best, and they are the rest of the rest. All right, so we move on. Uh, sorry, I was uh, an annoying <laughs> person is in my is in my Snapchat messaging. Uh, and in about hmm. they had subpar wrestling. Sucks so when people aren't paying attention. <laughs> mm. Touche, touche. Uh, first of all, I was paying attention. I was just enjoying a delicious snack. Oh, let me go to snack. You keep going. <laughs> when I like when I like to be entertained, you keep going. I like to have keep a going. snack with my entertainment. Yeah. And about that had some part wrestling and little heat. Cutie Suzuki defeated Luna Vachon in 8.52 with a cutie special. Now we have to wait for Justin to get a snack. Sorry, I was getting a snack. That's good, that's good. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like going to a good movie. You know, it's like you want some popcorn. No, that was just a trash bag. That's where WCW belongs. Yeah, the women's division, once again, you know, this only got a 42, but this was more so, oh, okay, well, I guess we're not talking about that. <laughs> we go backstage, and Sensei and Savage, they've got the Flock Dojo here, of course, and, uh, you know, and they're talking about, oh, they're, they're, they're talking about the business, you know, Raven's like, listen, okay, this is a big opportunity at Spring Stampede, I'm gonna win this belt for real, I'm gonna beat Rey Mysterio, and I am going to once again be world champion and listen randy i know you've got something going on with the hearts okay and, and and this is the deal you help me beat ray and we'll help you take care of the heart so i'll tell you what they want to they want to challenge you guys to a match at spring stampede that's fine that uh savage you 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 noble and and shannon moore you guys can buy mike awesome and chris canyon my flock brothers would love to help out anyway all right but i have focus on my match against Rey Mysterio. So, I, that's what I'm going to put my focus on. But listen, at Spring Stampede, it doesn't matter because we, we're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna win. Oh, yeah, you're right, Raven. We're going to show why this dojo is the cream of the crop. And, and, and you know something? This has just been a long time coming, and I know Brett no when they're... They say they're going to get help, and listen, I think we know the help they're going to get. I think it's very obvious. I think it's oh, it's only a matter of time before they walk down this ring, and let me just tell you, it doesn't matter if you get La Parka and La Sharka to help you. It doesn't matter, because the Savage Dojo will beat them, and just like we'll beat you. And Raven's like, La Parka and La Sharka. That's who you think they're they're gonna get? Yeah, who else would they get? Um, uh, you know what? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Laparka and Lasharka, right? Uh, listen, I'm gonna go. So, have fun with this. Uh, hi. <laughs> and, and Raven just leaves. The Savage goes, "All right, everyone, huddle up. It's time to run our play today. In the main event, I go against Rey Mysterio, and I'm gonna soften him up for Raven." And then Spring Stampede, we're going to break the hearts. <laughs> See what I did there? They're going to be heartbroken. We're going to make La Parka and La Shaka fishes out of water. Oh, yeah. Now everyone hands in. That's the end of that promo. All right. 
Here we go. Yes, and, and in match, Bubba Ray is defending his hardcore championship. But here's the thing, Justin. He beat Bill Demott, but he had a big upcoming match against Kurt Hennig. And Kurt Hennig challenged him to, like, it, he, he wanted to show, like, you know, anyone can be a hardcore wrestler. But, like, I'm, I'm, and it, it takes a true athlete to be a, a master technician. So Bubba Ray shows his technical side by tapping out Bill Demont here. Well, yeah, he did show his technical side. I will give him that. But it was also Bill Demont. So it wasn't like he tapped out Dean Malenko. So let's. I mean, you're right. It's cool a little, little bit. It's cool a little, little cool bit. Cool your pies. Cool your pies a little bit. Cool your pies a little bit. But still, big win for Bubba, showing that he's he yeah. can he can you know he might be able to uh, yeah. uh, out wrestle Kurt Eddie. He's not just a hardcore boy. Well, that, yeah, that was Bubba this right the there. Mic- Bubba grabs a microphone and he says, "You know, Kurt Hennig." Exactly what I just did to Bill DeMott. I made him tap out. That spring stampede, I'm going to tap you out. You see, a lot of people don't know this, but growing up in New York, in the, in the Bronx of New York, you know, it rough. You know, especially when you're a guy like me. You know, I was picked on a lot. I got into a lot of fights. But there was always people who thought they were better than me. Because I was different. I, you know, I wasn't the most athletic. I wasn't the cool guy. I was the nerd. I was the chubby kid. But what got me through was my love of professional wrestling. I've always wanted to be a professional wrestler. And I told myself, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks here. Because when I get my opportunity, when I am old enough to train, I'm going to learn how to wrestle. And I'm going to be a champion. Fast forward to a few years ago. I start training, and I get my big break at ECW, and then I get signed to WCW, and I become a multi-time tag team champion, and I become the hardcore champion, and I get something greater than championships. I finally, for the first time in my life, feel like I belong, and it's because of all of you. I'm like, crowd cheers. So Kurt Hennig, I'm not going to let some dumb, cocky jock try telling me that I don't belong here. I'm going to prove to you. This is like I'm going to prove to all those people who grew up not believing in me that I do belong here. And I belong in this ring. And I belong in the championship scene because I'm Bubba Ray Dudley. I'm the hardcore champion. At Spring Stampede, I'm going to make Kurt Hennig tap out. Oh, Bubba Ray Dudley turning into MJF a little bit right there. I can see yeah, a little shame. <laughs> I yeah. thought you were reading the transcript from that promo a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I know I'm pretty hard to know. I, I've heard that promo so many times, I think I could probably decide. Ugh. Yeah, it was... First time in my life, I thought I had friends. You abandoned me! That's all right. <laughs> Have you seen that promo? Of course. I mean, I had to. I had to watch it. I had to figure out what the hoopla was about. On... What did you think of it? Yeah. Yeah. You know. Oh, you're right. You're out of your damn mind. I think MJF's the best in the game right now. Oh, yeah, I didn't say that. I've been spouting that since I saw him live in WrestleMania weekend. But, I've, been, uh, I've been spouting that since he told me to kill myself in person. Oh, my God. It was, he was <laughs> so... Remember that? Th- yeah. I re- he yelled at some fucking... That was the day MJF became Justin's favorite wrestler. No, I was, he was my favorite <laughs> months before that. When he... <laughs> yeah, he was... He, he was yelling at... making fun of me definitely helped. Yeah, he was yelling at... F- you know, unhealthy people at like 4 a.m. at the Beyond Show at WrestleMania weekend at Mania 33 in New Orleans. And I'm like, this is the best guy ever. Who is this? Who is this man? <laughs> it was like him, Wheeler, Yuta, and like Session Moth Martino in a match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Tessa Blanchard was in that match too. Ugh, never mind. Ugh, Fuck ugh, her. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Lodi and Sick Boy are in tag team action and they take on the Discos. Fury and Inferno, to be exact. And about that decent reaction from the crowd and subpar wrestling, Lodi and Sick Boy, they defeat Disco Fury and Inferno. When Lodi pinned Disco Inferno with an aerial brain buster. What the hell is an aerial brain buster from what? The top rope? I assume so. Damn, Lodi pulling out big moves for fucking Nitro. <laughs> I know. Listen. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I wasn't expecting this to be two gangbusters, but that's okay. About the story, um, Sick Boy and Lodi they grab a microphone. Well, actually, Lodi grabs a microphone. Sick Boy does this thing where he just stands there and looks at the camera. 
And Lodi says, All right, how we doing, South Carolina? What's the lowdown with your boy Lodi and the sickest boy in the game? Sir. Oh! Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen. now listen, I have made it my mission in the year 2000 to prove the sick boy that we don't need Rick Rude. We don't need any manager. For the first time in my career, we don't need to be lackeys or henchmen or managed by anybody. We can take our own destiny into our own hands. We can make our own success, sick boy. All right, listen. You and I, we are going to be the next tag team champions, and I'm going to prove it. There's a match at Spring Stampede. It's the Road Warriors taking on DNA. Arguably two of the top teams. We got the Road Warriors, who are legends. Legends in tag team wrestling. Legends in professional wrestling. We got Dima Lenko and Alex Wright, a team that's been on a tear since they started forming. But guess what? They've only been teaming for like, what, a month? Me and Sick Boy, we're brothers. This is my best friend. We've been teaming for years. Road Warrior Hawk and Road Warrior Animal, they're legends. But guess what? So we've also seen in the ring they've lost a step. They're not what they used to be. Meanwhile, me and Sick Boy, we are in the prime of our careers. So it's Spring Stampede. I'm challenging both of these teams. We're going to make it a triple threat match. And they're saying that the winner of this match has to be next in line for best of the best. Well, listen, I'm going to give you a spoiler. You're looking at the best of the best. Sick Boy and Low D, we are the top tag team in this company, and we are going to prove it by beating both of them at Spring Stampede. And what do you say, sick boy? Sick boy nods. That's right! Hell yeah, we'll beat them! Because we are sick boy and low D. Um, yeah. Did you say they were going to be next in line for best of the best? Yeah, to take on best of the best. Oh, yeah, they are tag team tag champs, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. forget. I only, global I, tag team champs. Yeah, I thought they were only global. My bad. No run. Oh, you're good. You're good. Reverend Devon. He, he's in Ugh. the ring. Of course, he, he comes up. He's passing the thing around to get money from people. No one's giving him any money because he's a dirty heel. He gets in the ring and he says, Oh, take a oh, shower. Oh, my brother. Testify. Booze. He says, Welcome to the church of Devon. Now, can I please... Have your attention. Simmer down. I have something to say. He says, My opponent tonight is somebody who used to work for WCW. He doesn't anymore. And ever since then, you know, his life has been spiraling. Don't worry, because tonight, I'm gonna, I'm giving you the opportunity. I invited you personally tonight to get in this ring and face the Reverend. And after I beat you, you'll see the light. And you can join the church of Devon. Oh, my brother. And then as soon as he's going to say testify, this music hits, Justin. What music? The music, of I the music of Ice Train. What's that? Oh, you remember Ice Train. You're right. <laughs> I don't know about that. Decent wrestling from the crowd and subpar wrestling. Reverend Devon defeated Ice Train in 558 with a Dudley death drop. Yeah. Still pulling out Dudley moves, so maybe we got to change that. But regardless. Maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll give him an aerial brain buster. Yeah. <laughs> we are. We, we come to commercial. Six is in the ring. He's got a microphone. And he says, We came out here tonight. I need to talk about my best friend, Scott Hall. You see, he was on a rough patch. He was losing matches. And he's not right. He's in a dark dark place. When you're in a dark place, it's up to the, your friends and your family to pull you out. Well, Scott, I'm the closest thing to family you have in this business. And since you won't talk to me, that's fine. I hope you're listening. Because I want to talk, call out Stardust. So Stardust, get your 
stupid yellow face painted ass out here and come face me because I got something I got to say. Artist comes out. And, 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 Gold does, and Scott Hall's following behind. Stardust, you know, he, he comes out and he says, Six. The only reason I'm out here, it's not to hear what you have to say, because quite frankly, I don't care what you have to say. You are not a main character in this story. You're not even a supporting character. You're nothing. You're nothing but furniture. You're nothing but background characters. You're, you're nothing. But please, whatever you whatever you have to say, be quick, because I have to get back to helping Scott Hall get his life and his career back on track. And Six says, Stardust, I don't give a damn what you have to say. You have been lying to my best friend, and you made him turn against me, and I'm sick of it. So listen, if I can't talk any sense into Scott Hall by talking to him, all right? And clearly last week, me beating him, beating some sense into him didn't work either. And Stardust says, yes, because he beat you. In fact, that's the first match he's won in how long? I don't know about you, Scott, but I think that's going, this is going pretty successful already. He says, well, you know what? He says, you know what, Stardust? At Spring Stampede, you're going to go one-on-one against me, and you can put the TV title on the line, or you don't. I don't really care, because for me, it's not about that championship. For me, it's about beating your ass and showing Scott Hall that he doesn't need you. He needs this is Wolfpack. Artist laughs. He says, Six, if you want to wrestle me at Spring Stampede, of course you're on. And listen, I'll, I will put the TV championship on the line. You need to accept my condition. I don't care what your condition is. Whatever it is, the answer is yes. And Artist laughs. <laughs> well, I'm happy. You answered before you allowed me to name the stakes because I'm going to face you for this television championship. And the special guest referee is this man, Scott Hall. What? We'll see you at Spring Stampede 6. Okay. So 6 versus Stardust with Scott Hall, the special guest referee. Uh, that is That is something. What's Scott Hall going to do? It's his best friend and his, his, his mentor. And our main event. This got a 94. Hell yeah. And then, so, so Savage comes out, right? And, and Rey Mysterio's music hits. And, and there's nowhere to be seen. Like, there's nowhere to be seen. And, and people are starting, like, the announcers are like, oh my gosh, did, the, did he get the Raven and, and Savage and, and, and his, their cronies, did they, they attack him? Where's Rey Mysterio? And all of a sudden, Rey Mysterio from behind. Jump Savage, just beats him down from behind. Crowd erupts. Ram is right, right. Like he, he, he dropped. Actually, he like runs him behind. Drop kicks Savage. Savage falls into the middle rope. Hits him with a six one nine off the bat. And then he jumps up, and it looks like he's gonna do like a frog splash. But instead, he like looks around and hits a flying elbow on Savage. He hits him with an elbow, which infuriates Savage. So then they have a big hard fought match. Rey Mysterio, he he's built different. He is out for payback. He doesn't like. The the beatdown that he got, and he wants his championship back, and he wants to beat Raven. So, in an exceptional match, Rey Mysterio defeated Sensei Savage with a springboard Hurricanrana. Yeah, hell of a match right there. After the match, so to prove to Justin that I didn't just book this for ratings, I let all four of them be rated because you know. But anyway. Uh, Shark Boy and Laparka's music hits, and Savage looks around like, "Ooh, I knew this was coming!" And he like stands up, and like uh, the the rest of the dojo. Laparka's music my, hit. My, yeah, minus Raven, they're all there, and Laparka and Shark and La Sharka's music hitting, and then all of a sudden, they're like, "There's like a like a like a like a you know when like when DJs are doing like the turntables, they do like a record scratch. There's like a record scratch, and then." The Heart Foundation music hits. And Savage looks like he's, like, shocked. It looks like the, the roof. He's like, what? He looks just shocked. And the rest of them are like, why are you so shocked? We were more shocked that we, the Barkas music hit. Uh, but, they all, but all four of the Heart Foundation come out. And uh, Brett says, you know, Randy, you've been talking a lot of crap about me and my family. And you've been talking a lot of crap about the dungeon. And listen, 
Our dungeon, that's where real warriors come out and enter pro wrestling and become legends. All right, and you say this is beyond personal. Well, you're right, it is beyond personal. You wanted to fight me, and you want to fight my brother? Well, listen, me and Owen, we have our own beef, but we're brothers, and brothers fight. You, you're nothing but a bitch. But Spring Stampede, me and Owen, we were thinking to ourselves, we need to beat the dojo. We need to beat Sensei Savage, but we can't do it alone. The numbers are too great, and Owen says. So that's why we decided to call in a couple favors. And no, it's not the parka or the sharka. I don't know why you thought that was ever going to happen. That's that's not very smart, Randy. That's, that's not very smart at all. Thank God you're a, a sensei and not a math teacher because those numbers don't add up. But no, we knew that we needed to get a phone call. And what better way to fight a dojo than by calling in some family? If Davey Boy says, and that's why at Spring Stampede, the four of us, the Heart Foundation, we're back, and we're better than ever, and we are going to beat you. And Nightheart says, yeah! And then they all <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> they got a 93. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean... Yeah. Justin, it's coming together. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. What are you thinking? Wait, what's going through your head? Nah, not a lot. Thinking about SmackDown. Well, okay, yeah, I'm looking forward to SmackDown too. I'm also looking forward to Thunder. I'm also looking forward to seeing what our fans think about this series. I say series. I'm having a blast. Let's see how Thunder and SmackDown go. Yeah, let's just jump next right time, in. This. Ne- ne- next time you see us, we'll be re- we'll be the SmackDown. Yeah. Yeah. Which is now. And we are back. We are back with some Smack. It's SmackDown, everyone. Justin, I am excited to see what you have done for SmackDown. Are you just saying that, Chad? Yes. Oh. Wow, that hurts a little bit. Well, hurts. well sorry. I'm sorry it hurts. Sorry, sorry the SmackDown I just laid down is hurtful. Um, as you can see, we got off the we we had a we had a rough SmackDown week too. Uh rough meaning a green number, which is not good in my eyes. We need blue numbers. Blue numbers only. For both of us, like we, we we've been on a streak of great shows. Yeah, yeah, we have. But uh, I figured this would happen with this brand split. That guys like Lex Luger and Ricky Steamboat will be main eventing shows, and we saw Takamichi Noku main event Raw. Who's going to main event this SmackDown, Chad? We all know can it'll I, be. Can I make a guess? Well, I, we already know it. It will be Eddie and Paul White, as it was announced a couple weeks ago. So that match happens tonight. We also have Brian Danielson taking on Road Dog. That's our little preview of SmackDown. Let's get right into the show, Chad. We have our first match of the night. The pre-show, Rhino taking on Dave Taylor. And Rhino gores Dave Taylor in 823. Big pin for the uh, for Rhino. The, the man beast, Rhino. Mm-hmm. Our other pre-show match of the night, it's Harlem Heat taking on Nova in the Blue Meanie. Uh, just getting Harlem Heat. Um, a match right here. You know, let them, let them wrestle. And uh, needed to see if Nova and Boomini had any uh, chemistry, and they do not. So uh, they can go fuck themselves. Ah, interesting. Boomini, weak link of the match. Nova almost performing as good as Stevie Ray. So, you know, got some things. And our last thing of the pre show, it is confirmed, uh, you know, on WWE.com that the newly debuting. Friday night's Thursday night SmackDown tag team titles will be on the line as Road Rage takes on TNT. It'll be Oh, oh wow, what a oh, what Clash of the Titans over Clash here. of the Titans. That's <laughs> some of these men will be champions on SmackDown wow. at Backlash. It was supposed to be TCP, so Vicious is out for a while, so that's why we had to call it Audible. We move on to start SmackDown, Chad. And uh, this SmackDown starts with a little like uh, a little recap video of uh, Raw, the main event, uh, not the main event, the, the Stasiak Blackman match, where Stasiak picked up the win, but Edge missile drop kicked him after the match. Missile drop kick coming. It's you know one of the most devastating moves 
in WWF today. And after that the video, the, the, the little recap ends with Eric Bischoff and Edge watching it in a Bischoff's office chat. And, um, and Eric's, you know, he's like, I gotta give it to you, Edge, man. This is, you're really giving it to Sean Stasiak, the most over guy, the most, the, the most popular guy in the save. You're really giving it to him, Edge. But, uh, you know, you know, but with every action <laughs> comes a reaction. And now I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta I gotta do something about it because now there are rumors floating around on the dirt sheets that Raw's planning a, a counter attack, a counter invasion, and now I gotta, I gotta use resources to guard the entrances and I gotta guard the doors. I can't have Raw superstars coming into our show. This is only the third SmackDown. We can't have that happen yet, Edge. You know I'm proud of you, but you may have just fucked me there. And Edge is like, Eric, <laughs> you think I'm afraid of guys like Mosh? And the Armstrongs coming into here? Like, I'm a rated R superstar, Eric Bischoff. Let them come in here. You saw the video right there. I'll do to them what I did to Stasiak, and I'll knock them out with the missile dropkick. The most devastating move. No man's ever kicked out of the missile dropkick, Eric Bischoff. All right? Just let them come in, and then I'll handle them. Our opening match of the night, Kid Cash taking on Fig. Uh, Kid Cash defeats Fig in 950 with a dead level, Chad. How do you feel about Fig performing with Kid Cash? Oh, Fig, say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. He gets another match here on SmackDown. Still can't get a win. Kid Cash, another big win. Sucks. But with... <laughs> what? Fig sucks. No, he doesn't. Fig stinks. <laughs> All right, uh, backstage, Tyson does, you know, lacing up his boots, and he turns around, and the light heavyweight division is standing, uh, you know, right behind him. And Trent Aston steps up, and he says, look here, I'm st I I'm talking, I'm speaking for the rest, of the, the, the fellow light heavyweight um, competitors on SmackDown. We say we hate you. Look, we knew, we knew you back in TNA. We all came to, from TNA. Well, most of us did. Sorry, Sasuke. But we all came from TNA. We saw you down there, and you were this young and up-and-comer. You were a chipper guy. You were joking around, you know, having great matches. But now you're up here just a young and bitter piece of shit scumbag. And Tyson, like, what happened? What happened to that Ty What happened to Tyson that was going around and standing on bar tables singing Sweet Caroline? Drinking and smashing some PPRs. What happened to that? We missed that. We missed that, Tyson. All right. And now, Tyson, maybe I don't. Know, maybe maybe something happened with. Maybe you were brainwashed by PJ and A Steel. But maybe something's got to be done about it. Maybe I gotta. Maybe I gotta beat some sense into you, Tyson, to get that old Tyson back. Maybe I'm just gonna, you know. Maybe that Tyson, that belt doesn't belong to you anymore, man. It doesn't belong. It should belong to me. Backlash. I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it for the boys back here. I'm gonna win that light heavyweight championship. Take that belt off you. I'm taking the boys out to Applebee's. And we're gonna be singing Sweet Caroline in your in your in your for you, alright? In spite of you, while you're crying at home in your fucking hotel room alone, while we're smashing two dollar Long Islands. Maybe not everyone missed it. Go still seventeen, but uh. <laughs> so okay. sodas first. Uh, we'll, we'll, so first. we'll get waters for real, Aguila or in, in a Mystico, but Tyson, a couple days, eight days actually. Or no, let's what is it? Ten days. I'm taking that belt back. And maybe that'll snap some sense into the old Tyson. We move on. Chad Collier taking on Gang Rell in a poor match. Chad Collier continues his winning streak. Here, Chad. Gets a big Hell win. yeah. Defeating former tag team title contender Gang Rell. <laughs> Not even former tag team champion. He beat a vampire. He beat, a, he beat Gang Rell. Uh, we move on. Eric Bischoff has a mic, and he says he's got an announcement to make, Chad. He says SmackDown has made a big acquisition right here. And it uh, announces that SmackDown has come 
to an agreement with CMLL. And that'll allow both companies to share talent and showcase how good of a roster both companies have. And then this next match will be a CMLL showcase showcase match. So we have a triple threat match. Dr. Wagner Jr., Universal 2000, and Cybernetico. In a good match, Cybernetico gets the win when he pins Universal 2000 with a apoptolyptica. Kind of handy, Jim. Huh? Cool. Dr. Wagner Jr. Um, got hurt literally the day before this. So uh, not a good start for the agreement between these two companies. But, uh, <sighs> but hey, this will allow WWF guys to get some more work in, in Mexico. And yeah. guys, guys like That's... Dr. Wagner Jr. and Cybernetico. Time here. I can't, to sh- to, I can't wait to see who your first uh, WWF global champion will be. Well, there will not be a, an alliance title, Jim. That is to be, but we just want to, you know, broaden our horizons, Jim. We are the biggest company in the game, but, you know, we could be bigger. We move on. Uh, this is <laughs> this is SmackDown Security Squad right here. Luger, <laughs> Caprice Coleman, Violent J, Savio Vega, Dave Taylor, and Rhino. They're, they're all watching separate doors and separate entrances to the arena. We're expecting someone from Raw or mem- a lot of people from Raw to invade SmackDown tonight, Jim. People are invading. Quick, call Dave Taylor and Violet J. <laughs> Got a 66, <laughs> so stuck that'll it. Fix him. That'll fix him. <laughs> uh, we are. We see Eddie Guerrero going over film. He's watching it like a, a, a quarterback in the NFL. He's going over game tape on Paul White, trying to find out some weaknesses and trying to get a plan of attack. We move on to our fourth match of the night. It's Test and Chase Tatum. Uh, Test wins. Big. This was supposed to be the big boot, but he hits... A pump handle slam instead. Good for him. Um, after that, the camera goes back, and we we have Edge. Uh, you know, we're following Edge, and he's going to the bathroom right now. Chad, he's taking a break from his stand. He goes to the bathroom, and he um, he opens the stall door. And what did he find in that stall door, Chad? Sean Stasiak. Oh, oh man! Sean Stasiak, surprise, waiting in uh, Edge's locker room bathroom stall. And he hits him with a clothesline and throws him into the sink, into the mirror, and Edge is just bleeding all over the place. And Stasek just says, hey, all's fair in love and war, Edge. See you at Backlash, buddy. Stasek lays out Edge here on SmackDown. No one even saw him in the arena. Oh. Uh, you didn't tell me Violent J didn't do a good enough job <laughs> stopping him? All right, co-man event of the night. Brian Danielson take it on Road Dog. This match was pretty good. Pretty good. Brian hit his uh, patented running knee and almost pinned Road Dog, but you know Road Dog, being the experienced veteran that he is, uh, hits Brian Danison with a fast schoolboy uh, roll up and uh, sneaks sneaks a win against Brian Danison. Chad. Oh yeah. So there. And our main event of the night, Chad. It's Eddie Guerrero and Paul White. These guys, you know, Paul White is dominating for. A good portion of the match, Jed. He's he's the he's the world's largest athlete. He's got Eddie in the corner, right? And Paul White goes in for a running, you know, body pump slam, whatever in the corner, big, oh, that thing. And uh, Eddie moves, or and while he's moving, he pulls the referee in the way, and Big Show takes out the referee. And Paul White's trying to get him up, trying to get him up, and Eddie sneaks out and grabs a grabs a chair, Chad. And he crushes Paul White in the head with that chair. Ugh. Hits the frog smash, wakes up the referee, and pins him. And Eddie Guerrero. Well, no. Before that, we have Taker. I forgot this wasn't in the script. This is a uh, Taker. This is just him uh, driving down Route 66 in his bike. <laughs> the one that he just cleaned. <laughs> he just cleaned. He took it out. And uh, yeah, that happened. Oh, great chemistry for these two. Fuck yeah, let's go. Oh, Oh, I needed that. And, uh, yeah, so Eddie Guerrero p- beating Paul White. And he will find out before b- uh, Backlash who he will take on in the main event. But we'll find that out on next SmackDown show. Because oh, so that's... A week er- he gets a week early. Yeah. And that's oh. the end of the show. An 87 again. Damn. That's because none of this show was good besides the last two things. It's an Undertaker going on a bike ride, and then the main event. Hey, that's that's SmackDown right now, Chad. That's just how it is. That's. 
<laughs> our best to take my newly washed four hog out. Our best matches were Eddie and Paul White and three guys that aren't technically contracted to WWF. <laughs> SmackDown's doing great. SmackDown is fine. We got a blue number. Whatever. We'll see blue numbers. Maybe we'll maybe maybe we'll see if Thunder can have a blue no Thunder blue number. It rhymes, Chad. Illuminati. Illuminati. Let's get to Thunder right now. <laughs> Do you hear that? That's the sound of the thunder. And here we are. It's time for some WCW Thunder, baby. That was the sound of thunder? That sounds like a fan. <laughs> well, and I'm a fan of thunder, so... D'Lo Brown beats David Flair. <laughs> and Mike and Mike and Mike defeat Ron Killings on Homicide. All right. Yeah, we start the show <laughs> off with a big six-man tag. Uh, and, and a decent... I've been trying to do more, like, you know, the, for a while I felt like it was like, oh, okay, time to start Nitro. Raven promo. All right. Here we go. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try, try to start with more matches. But here we are. And uh, so we were having a six-man tonight. And decent match... AJ and the Hardy Boys defeat El Hijo Del Santo and La Parca and La Sharka with AJ pinned La Sharka with a spinal tap. Spiral, but close enough. Oh, spiral tap. Okay. Yeah, pretty yeah, good. Pretty, pretty good match. AJ, um, AJ and the Hardys. AJ getting an eighty-four, and then everyone else not really. I mean, seventy-five for Del Santo and Jeff, but you know that's. We co Jeff Psychosis is here. He's via satellite. So he's not really here. No, he's, he's here from his home. And uh, he is, he's beaten up. And uh, actually, we forgot, I forgot. We got to give him a picture without a mask. We lost his mask. So he's not wearing a mask in this picture. Because, of course, he lost his mask to Scott Steiner. He's here and he's like, hey, everyone. It's Chef Psychosis. I just wanted to give everybody an update on my condition. You know, I'm still not cleared to wrestle. You know, Scott, he... Really did a number on me. He took my title. And he took years off my career. He took my mask. A mask for a luchador, that's everything. And he took that from me. I can't be back to stop him. Scott, I want you to listen closely. I will come back. When I come back, whether you're champion or not, it doesn't matter. When I come back, I will have one goal in mind, and that goal will be to destroy you. I am going to come back, and that's going to be a new chef, a, 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 a more driven, a more motivated chef, because you took my mask, you took my championship, and you took away my opportunity to live my dream in front of those fans. Listen, you got a battle coming up. You got a, a battle coming up that's even cl closer because you're facing my best friend, Hoovitude. A man who has been underestimated and counted out his whole career. And that's exactly what makes him dangerous. I've seen what a motivated Hoovy can do. Scott, I hope you're ready because Hoovitude is, is coming for that championship, and I'm coming. To the head of Scott Steiner. And then we have a match. And in about that had a decent wrestling and a, a little heat. Lance Storm defeated Fit Finley with submission. They just got a 48. Oh. They had bad chemistry. I'm on mute. Oh, I'm on mute. My bad. Oh. Um. Yeah, this fucking this match stunk because it's pre-show workers. Oh, poor Finley. What do you anyway. mean, poor Finley? You did it. <laughs> poor Finley. Next match. Oh, oh, listen. So three count is in the ring and and they're they're doing a concert. They're singing and all of a sudden their music's cut off. A music we haven't heard yet. Scott Hall, Scotty Too Hotty, Scott Hall, Scotty Too Hotty comes out. He like, he comes up doing the worm and he's dancing and then he says. You know, I've been away for a minute. I've been gone for a few weeks. 
and I've been gone for a few weeks because I've been trying to figure out what exactly Scotty Too Hotty in WCW was missing. You know, I was losing matches, and I was losing matches to, th- to three count. And I decided the reason why I was losing to three count was because I wasn't cool enough. I needed to be too cool. And that's why I needed this guy. And then, Jerry Lawler Jr., who's been repackaged as Grandmaster Sexay. He comes out, too, and they're dancing. Too Cool is here, everyone. And then about that decent reaction of the crowd and subpar wrestling, Too Cool defeated Three Count when Scotty Too Hotty pinned Evan Courageous with a pile driver. Yeah, Too Cool defeating a Three Count. And one match. Wow. With one fall. <laughs> Four guys. Three count lost to two cool in one fall. With four guys. <laughs> four four people in the ring. And after the match, they, they continue to party. They're, they're dancing with the fans. They're doing the worm. Oh, they're doing the worm. These little fuckers. Scott Hall, you, tra- you traitor. Scott Scotty Hall, Scotty. Hall, Grandmaster Sexay. Scotty too funky. No. Oh my, what the oh, fuck? This got a 75. Hell yeah. Uh, and a decent match. Billy Kidman defeated Zandig with a shooting star press. Good for Billy Kid. Good for Billy Kidman. Good for Zandig. Yeah, Zandig <laughs> also. You know, he got a 40, but the match is definitely carried by Billy Kidman. But here we go. Ah, oh, we hear DNA. D. Malenko and Alex Wright. They are in the ring and they're talking. They're, they're like, you know, we woke up on Monday. Amped and ready to face off against the Road Warriors. Beat them, put old Yeller and Mr. Head out back and put them out of their misery. And then we were going to go face the best of the best. And then I find out that we have two editors in that match. Sick Boy and Low D. You know, I actually laughed when I heard about it. I mean, really? Sick Boy and Low D? They shouldn't even be in the co- same conversation as DNA, and quite frankly, as the Road Warriors. Listen, I'm going to give them the opportunity to come out here and, and say that they got a little too big for their britches, they got a little too carried away, and I'm going to let them back out of this match at Spring Stampede. I'm going to warn them if they don't, then the Iceman... I'm going to break their arms. I'm going to put them out of their misery. And we're going to prove why we are not only the most talented tag team, but the most violent tag team in WCW. And then Sick Boy and Low D's music hits. Low D comes out, Sick Boy, and, he, and, and Low D says, You know, D Malenko, I hear what you're saying. Here's the thing. I don't give a damn about what you have to say. And quite frankly, none of these people give a damn about what you have to say. And Alex Wright, you don't talk at all. You just let Dean Malenko do all the talking. Listen, me and Sick Boy, we're two chatterboxes. We're always talking. Ain't that right, Sick Boy? And he, just, he nods. Exactly. Thanks. I'm mad. Trying to get this guy to stop talking. That's the trick. And listen, Dean Malenko, you are doing exactly what every team does when they get in the ring with us. And that's what makes us dangerous. We're underestimated. But I'm going to prove to you that we have what it takes. In fact, we're not, we're not backing out. No, we're still going to be at Spring Stampede. And I'm challenging you to a match tonight. Dean Malenko versus Low D. What do you have to say? And Dean laughs. And says, you know what? If I have to teach you this lesson the hard way, then you're on, Low D. Let's wrestle. Let's wrestle. Let's do, and let's do it next. Dean Malenko, a lot better on the mic in-game than I thought he was. Oh, yeah. He had the crowd eating in the palm of his hand. Oh, wow. And in a decent match, Low D defeats Dean Malenko with a fast... He rolled up Dean Malenko, came out of nowhere. A little fucking schoolboy pin right there. Oh, Dean Malenko's pissed. Low D, he rolls him up, rolls out of the ring, and he's celebrating. He's acting like he just won the world championship. He, he did. He stoked. beat Dean Malenko. He's stoked. And then other... Listen, that's got to that's, that's, that's move some momentum in their way, heading into Spring Stampede. You would think so, Chad. Speaking of momentum turning, Sting, another vignette. 
Uh, Sting, last time we saw Sting, he was breaking uh, a mirrors in a funhouse. Uh, and now he is, uh, you know, he's, he's in an alley. He's in an alley, and he's spray painting on a brick wall. And everyone thinks, spray painting? Is this the NWO? But it pans <laughs> out. That's not the NWO. It's just a, it's a picture of Sting's face in spray paint. And it says, the icon returns at Spring Stampede. He's gone for like two weeks. And he had to refind himself. He had to find himself. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god. He's got a 99. Oh my god. And our main event, Chris <laughs> Canyon versus Owen Hart. Oh, they have pretty good chemistry. That's good. To oh know. my canyon! Wow, he and goes exceptional. Oh. An exceptional match. <laughs> Owen Hart defeated Chris Canyon with a sharpshooter. Owen, but, come back, a, baby boy. Oh, what a but what a match! What a what a performance! <sighs> An eighty-four wow. to ninety-one. It's not like they both had hundreds or anything. Like Eddie and Stajak, yeah. they just had great chemistry. Everything was rolling right here. You're right, Justin. The main event would save this. <laughs> oh. That was our main event match, but it was not our main event angle because after that match, we've got we get the way. Did you just Everyone come. Loves a good way. Every <laughs> I did. I did just come after that. Look at that rating. A hundred. You kidding me? <laughs> Woo. <laughs> um, oh, so they act like you've been there before, Chad. <laughs> it just it surprises me every time. They have. <laughs> Weigh in. Scott Steiner, he gets on the scale. Oh, weigh in. Actually, no. Who but to Guerrero? He gets on the scale. You know, 205. Got Live. <laughs> 205. Ha ha ha. Move out of the way. Let me get on the scale. And then he steps on the scale. The scale breaks. He's like, you're damn right the scale broke. The scale could have handled how big a Papa Pump is. Ah, I'll tell you how much I weigh. I weigh. 320 pounds, all muscle. And all you ladies know that the Universal Champion, Big Papa Pup, is the big bad booty. And Hoovy Toot smacks the mic out of his hand. He says, I don't care to hear any more of your dumb catchphrases. You say the same thing every single week. All right? I'm done listening to you. All right? Listen, everyone knows how these go. All right? Well, you know how contract signings go. We haven't really done a weigh-in. To be honest, this is kind of stupid. Um, I don't really see the point in this, but listen, no one wants to hear us talk. They want to see, hear, see us eat each other up. So why don't you go over there, and I get in this corner, and let's just have the match now. Why wait till Spring Stampede? Come on, Scott. What are you? Are you a champion, or are you a little bitch? And then Scott, you know, he, he says, You listen to me, Hoovy. When I'm talking, I'm the champ. When I'm talking... You shut your mouth, and you listen to what I have to say. And he turns back around. He poses and flexes. These people want to see Scott. And while Scott's, like, posing and talking himself up, Hoobie Toot grabs the scale, and he walks over, and he just puts the scale through <laughs> through the head of Scott Steiner. Just hits him in the head with the scale, and Scott crumbles. He's unconscious. And then Hoobie Toot grabs the microphone, and he says... It doesn't matter how much you weigh, Scott Steiner. It doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't matter how muscular you are. Because you're stepping in the ring at Spring Stampede against the Giant Slayer. And the bigger they are, Scott, the harder they fall. And at Spring Stampede, the genetic freak falls. And that's Thunder. That is Thunder. 94. 94. Hell yeah. Love to see it. Thank God those last three uh, things happened. Yeah, I mean, that's that's your your bread and butter right there. Hell yeah. We still haven't had 100, though, Chad. Remember that. Right. Just can't pull it. Just can't do it. We're getting, clo we're getting close, though. We're getting close. Mm -hmm. Listen, we're getting close. All right, yeah, that was uh, week three. We're on the go home shows coming up. Yeah, we are the go homes to um, the backlash and spring stampede, Chad. Two major shows for both of our companies. 
but mostly mine. The first dual, the first dual branded pay per view for WWF. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what both of us do. Oh. No. I can't wait to see who Eddie Guerrero is facing. I can't wait for Mosh number two to face Eddie Guerrero. Ah, yes, fair. Yeah, well, I mean, you'll find out on SmackDown. I hope I, hope I didn't just spoil it. You did. Oh, you're well, writing it now. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Or the series is over. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you'll, you'll never see Eddie Guerrero versus Mosh number two. It's now gonna be Fig and Eddie Guerrero. Sorry. Oh, what a match! All right, we'll see you there. Peace out.